you guys here. Um, I'm really pleased to be here with, with all of you and thank you for coming instead of visiting this nice city. My presentation is going to be very boring compared with this. Very nice pictures and, and the subject is, is quite boring compared with that. So if you want to, to have a um, to sleep or something, you are... Don't do it. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, don't do it. Um, <coughs> I don't know the time, so you with five, mi five minutes left, you, t you tell me, please. So five minutes before. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. Yeah, 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 don't worry, don't worry. Well, I know how to do my to job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to speak about archives, about um, the, the municipal archives of Coimbra City, <coughs> and um, from medieval times to early modern times. And Coimbra is here. So around here, this is Spain, this is, here is Coimbra. I'm going to give you some <coughs> general, very general concepts about the City Council archive. The City Council and the archive. The Council comes in, in Europe, this is very typical from all of Europe, for asking for Council, for, for, for organizing a city, a few men make a meeting a day say what they must do for the city, for rule the city. It was very simple in the 11th century and it was very difficult to do the same in many, many countries in Europe. And in this simple meeting, simple at the beginning, at the beginning they were very open, but later with, with the centuries they became more closer with, with a very high hierarchy and oligarchy, etc. But in, in these meetings they began to produce documents and these documents <coughs> begin to be kept where in archives in arts in chests but they don't preserve all, all the documents they only preserve some documents the documents they think are important so you lose many many documents from a from a great documental past you used to have just a few documents and even if they are a lot it's perhaps a 5%, 10%, this is a very radius, and even in this, in this, in the case you have many documents, or a council have produced many documents, I'm going to jump, oh no, yeah, I'm going to make a little jump, sorry for you, close your eyes, <laughs> now open, for example, when you have documents from Coimbra, like this, this, this or, or others, sometimes they are not in the, in the Coimbra archive, in the same Coimbra, they are in the Archivo uh, Nacional de Torre de Todo, in the National Archive of Lisbon, or in other archives. And sometimes they have no idea why are they in other places, uh, in other archives. So uh, it's complicated to follow, close your eyes, close your eyes, to follow the, 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 um, the way of a document and why is a document here and not there. And so um, in this archive, even when council is, was born in 11th century, and the archive must have born at that time, because you need to, to preserve all the documents in a natural way, these archive have only documents since 13th century. There's some documents from, perhaps they say, oh, perhaps it's 12th century, 13th century, but 13th century for sure, with data, uh, but from the very beginning, they must have had documents. There are some, some examples. Later I will tell you something about that if I have time enough. I'm going to make some mention about the sources I have used on the mentions related with the documents. Um, I have <coughs> follow up, I, I have researched mentions related with the use of the documents to rule the city uh, they used to be administrative and juridical sources. Um, I have found indirect mentions in administrative documents, like los uh, libros de veras esos pergaminos abusos, blah, 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 and direct sources only from 17th century. It's a, an inventory book. I'm going to speak about this later. I, I was following these mentions by one side, and by the other side, I was following mentions about the verbal information. This is not easy to follow, but the oral transmission of the information and 
for studying how to rule a city, I think we must study both. Even if it's difficult, they are not systematic mentions, but I found one, as for example, in the year 1436, the king allowed men to be judges without knowing, reading, nor writing, which shows the coexistence between orality and, and writing. We, I think we must take uh, always into account this kind of, of testimonies that, of that oral tradition for ruling a city. Um, I have looked for the law too, law compilations about archives, and summarizing, they speak about that a council must keep the documents in a, in a chest with two keys. I have data, I'm not going to tell you now, but for you to know the context, that was very useful, <coughs> typical in Europe and in Spain too. In Spain it was with three keys. Three keys, one key for one person, two keys, two keys for one person, one was an orderman, one was a scrivener, and that speaks about the organization, it, it has a symbolic, juridic, many meanings about the keys. So, um, the number of keys and who had the key, the officers. So, when we speak about an archive, we used to think as this kind of archives, the Archivo Nacional de Torre National Archive of, of Lisbon, a very nice tower, very big palace, very nice. They used to be like that, just simple arcs with keys. And um, in general, that was happening in Europe, because many people find, many documentarist people say, oh, they were hidden documents in a chest. They were not hidden them, they were keeping them. And you can find them in the documentation, and you can find them in the law. Um, and summarizing, the evolution was, first, they asked for half chests with keys, later, lockers or armchairs, armarios, later rooms, and later buildings, which is natural too. You have at the beginning a few documents, and later you have more administrative um, um, uh, um, life. Yeah, administrative life in a city, you have more documents, more documents, you need more, keep them more. So, I'm going to quote only two greatest hits about the archival management from medieval to early modern ages in Coimbra. One is the 14th century, um, where they say that they are going to divide the documents, and I'm going to explain you now, and another in the 17th century with the inventory book. And this about the 14th century is very important because if, if this is a, a, a map of the city, they say they have a problem, but it's very typical in Europe too to have the documents divide. They used to put, uh, as, as here, a part in, in the, um, for example, in the town council, which is this in Coimbra, and another in, the, in a church, in a monastery, in a, in a cathedral, as here in Coimbra. And they have the, the municipal city with the documents divide. And many historians have asked about that. Why? They used to say, oh, this is because of security reasons. This is because of many, many reasons. We, we were speaking about that. And I have found in Coimbra one reason. I don't know if it's always the reason, but I say, it was the, 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 the town council having problems with the citizens because they were abusing, the oligarchs were abusing uh, the, the rights of the, of the citizens. <coughs> so they, is it five minutes yet? No. No. Okay. <laughs> You're fine. So, okay, okay. You have seven minutes and a half. Okay, okay, thank you. So, uh, they decided to divide the documentation because it was a, a problem with the oligarchs and the rulers, the elder men, didn't want to the citizens have their own rights. So because of that, they divide the documentation, which is a completely unexpected reason. And they write this, so this is very important discovery. So, uh, summarizing for big, this is the, the um, where the document the, where the documents were kept in this tower. This uh, the, the city council was um, have the the meetings here. Oh, sorry, and this is more pictures about uh, where the documents were produced and um, <coughs> and, and the chests were and the arm, arm and the wardrobes with documents, etc. And the other hit 
is the 16th century the inventory book of the archive. It describes uh, a chest with documents, with sacks, organized in bundles, plus gavetas, lockers. How about the keys? They don't speak about the keys. Uh, so you have always, the, the, the information is not always complete. This is a very big problem with the sources speaking about archives, because they were interested in the administrative um, information or juridical information, not about the, oh, such a nice document, we must preserve it, no, no. So when you stop using a document, you used to reuse it. We were, we are going to see some sample. This is an <coughs> example of, of the inventory book. They say a first sack in one chest, so simple. Um, first bundle, muscle, and uh, I'm going to summarize. Um, I was looking for ways to preserve documents, and in the doc in the archive, they preserve this this box as a as a book but you open and it's a book and they say no oh, that had a very big problems with a what what wood womb la carcoma <laughs> so, and they have to these other books shape of books they were boxes of um tin but for another problem oxidation but i have only find find these mentions in the 19th century catalogs of the archive mm -hmm. on 19th century and 20th century inventories and mixing information so i want to tell you uh, summarizing um that in early modern ages it was very typical to use medieval documents when they lost their administrative um, uh, functionality. Functionality. Thank you very much. They they use the um, departments mm -hmm. as a building. So you can see here the, the shape. Mm -hmm. You um, you can use it. That they were using as a, a building. So in 20th century, archivists began to to take out the building, to put it and make it. As an archive, oh, this is another document. Oh. So sometimes you have it preserved together, but and this is a, they have studied them, and but it's a pity because well, it was a very resistant material, so they reuse it, and now they decide to, to take them away. Is it uh, the, the best thing to do with an old document? And, and you put the other document, the, the other book, without, for example, without any binding or with a binding with acid paper, or, uh, I think it's, they must study more closely. And uh, summarizing, you have so many, many testimonies about the uses in early modern age of um, reducing medieval documents as the la labels, as the, the notations, this is of the 17th century book of the Receta de Espesa, uh, of um, spending money in things. And um, sometimes um, they have reduced the document, but it, uh, the medieval document in early modern age, but the document is still in the same book. As in this, this foral, when you open it, it's a foral of the uh, uh, 16th century, and this is an old document, a medieval document. Sometimes you have it. The other they take away. In in Belgium, I think it's in Leiden. In Leiden, it's Eric Wackel studying these kind of things, but they are not taking away the bindings. They are studying it with X-rays. So this is non-invasive uh, method. It's quite better, I think. Uh, this is uh, in some index. I have used to, to follow these mentions of tin books, wooden books, old mentions, and I'm trying to reconstruct how, mm -hmm. how they were managing with direct mentions, indirect mentions, and two reflections to conclude. One about theory, uh, I'm thinking it was a, it was continued, continued, continu continuity, continuity between early medieval and early modern age. It was the same. It was they were <coughs> in documents in arcs, so it was quite archaic. And another reflection about methodology: the non-systematic study I have made uh, have 
disadvantages because I am reflecting all that too all days and I think no because the, the, the sources I am studying they are non-systematic registers they, are, they have some measures so, so it's quite difficult to, to, to follow this to, to make this research for me. so thank you very much thank you thank you very much you still have it